So, you've studied the ontological argument, you've thought about the standard objections, and you've thought about replies to those objections. Still though, even though you understand it, you might wonder what's the point. After all, it was written in Latin at a time where the only people who could read Latin were members of the clergy, so presumably people who did not really need a proof of the existence of God. And besides, there weren't any atheists. The religious competition came from Jews and Muslims and the few remaining pagans. So what was the point? In order to see what the point was, I think you have to look at the argument in the two documents where Anselm presented it. That's the Monologion and the Proslogion. In both of those two documents, Anselm presents the ontological argument very quickly at the beginning and then moves on to talk about other things. The other things that he talks about are mostly paradoxes. So in the Monologion, he talks about the idea that um, God has to be everywhere and at all times, but also is not in any place and is, doesn't exist at any time. How does that work? That sounds like a contradiction. The Monologion talks a lot about the Trinity and the doctrine of the Trinity presents something of a, a paradox to the logical mind. Eventually, uh, having turned it over, Anselm says that um, it's inexplicable, but we have to believe it. And he has to explain how a reasonable person can do that, how you can um, believe something that's ultimately inexplicable. In the Proslogion, similarly, Anselm considers various paradoxes. He talks about how God is both just and merciful. If God is just, he must punish people. But if he's merciful, perhaps he shouldn't punish people. How do those two things go together? That looks like a paradox. Again, God is supposed to be omnipotent, but there are things he can't do. He can't tell a lie, he can't be corrupted, he can't change the past, according to Anselm. Um, how does that work? How is he omnipotent if um, those things are true? Apparently, he alone is eternal, and yet we're also told that there are other eternal spirits. How is that possible? That looks like a flat contradiction. God is both seen and not seen by people who believe. And finally, in the Proslogion, uh, Anselm talks some more about the Trinity. So, in both of these documents, the ontological argument is there not to convince you of the existence of God, but to establish a conception of God, a definition of God, that he thinks will allow him to go on and unravel and unpick and make comprehensible, to some degree anyway, these various paradoxes and apparent contradictions that he finds already existing within the Christian tradition. And that's the point. That's the value of it, is that uh, the argument, the ontological argument, sets him up to do this paradox unravelling exercise. That's why the motto of both these documents and the title of the uh, Proslogion originally is Faith Seeking Understanding. Seeking understanding is particularly difficult if you inherit a religious tradition that seems to be full of paradoxes and contradictions. And the value of the ontological argument, the point of it for Anselm, is that he thinks it's a tool that allows him to unravel and unpick, or at least to make um, acceptable to a, a reasonable person, those contradictions and paradoxes. That's the point of it.